Hi everyone, welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. And I'm Gabby. And this is the show where we talk about all things automotive. In a trunk. In a trunk. In so a trunk. So what car are we in today? Today we're in the 2024 Kia Sportage Plug-In Hybrid. And that gently segues us into today's topic, which is hybrid versus plug-in hybrid. What's the difference? Which one's better? And which one might be best for you and your family? So today we're gonna to give you the facts, we're gonna explain the differences between the two, and we're also gonna talk about some real world scenarios where one may outweigh the other. Mm -hmm. So Charlotte, let's get into it. Let's get right into it. So for today's video episode, whatever streaming device that you are listening to this on, I'm gonna be taking more of the hybrid stance, mm -hmm. and Gabby's gonna be looking more at the plug-in hybrid. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to both of these vehicles, is we know that the umbrella of you know these zero emissions vehicles, EVs, PHEVs, HEVs, can be kind of confusing. So we wanna make it really simple for you guys. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about a hybrid first and foremost. Now a hybrid is what most people is going to think of when they think of a hybrid vehicle. <laughs> there may be one specific vehicle that comes to mind just in the world of vehicles in general and that's the Toyota Prius. Absolutely, that's like the poster child mm -hmm. for these types of vehicles. For yes. And think of what you think of when you think of the Toyota Prius. You think of efficiency, you know, you think of a green vehicle and that definitely is going to be a key factor. But when it comes to a hybrid vehicle, what uh, pretty much that entails is it's a regular car with the internal combustion engine, so it still has a gasoline engine, but it also is going to have an electric motor and a smaller battery pack to help, really to help with the fuel economy. If you wanna think of it in a different sense to make it pretty simple, is basically what that electric motor is doing is it's helping the engine um, to make it a little bit more efficient. It's giving it that little boost, little moral support, if you will. <laughs> so much like a hybrid workplace where you know you have some days at home, some mm -hmm. days in the office, it's combined. It's so two you, things you but working <laughs> together. Yes, you got it. And the great thing about a hybrid is it's nothing that you have to charge. You know, don't have to plug it in or anything like that. And you really don't have to change anything with your lifestyle about it. Mm -hmm. Now to put some energy into that battery pack um, into for the hybrid vehicle, you can either do that of course by using the gasoline engine which the vehicle is equipped with, but also through regenerative braking. And if you're not familiar with what regenerative braking is, and that sounds a little bit daunting to you, other people call it regen if you've heard that term tossed around. Uh, basically, it's just putting that kinetic energy when you come, when you come to a stop or when you start braking uh, back into the battery. And then you're gonna use that as you're accelerating from a stop, um, as you're just continuing to accelerate. And that's what's gonna give you a little bit more of fuel economy too. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that most hybrids, so I know for example, the Hyundai Elantra comes mm -hmm. as a hybrid or you can get it just straight gas. At low speeds or at idles where a lot of people, you know, that drive traffic, stop and go, it's primarily EV. So you're yeah. not wasting any gas when you're at a stop or if you're at a slow speed, think like a parking lot speed, which is actually really beneficial if you're someone who again, lives in a busy city where more often than not, you're in traffic. Exactly, and for me, that is the bulk of the driving that I do. I live and work in the same town, so it's not like I'm doing huge stretches on the highway, so something like that I find specifically beneficial. Mm -hmm. But before I get into the pros and cons of a typical hybrid, let's talk about what a PHEV is and how that differs. Sorry if the camera angle looks a little different if you're watching this on YouTube. We had to restart because our gimbal dropped. But if you're listening to the audio podcast, we're gonna continue off where Charlotte left. So she beautifully explained what a hybrid vehicle is. Beautifully. Beautifully. Ooh. <laughs> now I'm going to switch it up a little bit and add a P to the HEV. That's right, we're talking about plug-in hybrid electric vehicles now. So as the name suggests, these hybrids you plug in. And the reason why you can plug these ones in and not a regular hybrid is because these vehicles feature a larger battery pack that is actually <laughs> capable of operating from a recharge. So you're gonna find your main benefits of this plug-in hybrid over regular hybrid just simply by plugging it in. Essentially, when you do this, let's say you charge your vehicle to 100%. I know for Kia product, actually the vehicle we're sitting in today has about 55 kilometers of all electric range. That means whether it's highway, city, winter conditions, summer conditions, I can largely drive my vehicle on just electric power, as long as it's plugged in. <laughs> now you may be wondering, okay, what happens after that? 55 kilometers isn't a long drive. I drive 100 kilometers a day. Don't worry about that because after that range is depleted, you still have a regular hybrid vehicle. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions people think when it comes to PHEVs, yeah. is they think that they're either driving something that is 
strictly electric for a set amount of kilometers or miles, mm -hmm. and then they're driving something that's strictly gasoline, when yes. really that's not the case. That's not the case. Now, there are some disadvantages to this as opposed to your regular hybrid, but there's also certainly some pros, and again, mm -hmm. it largely comes down to your lifestyle. We'll explain that a bit later on, but I'm gonna explain a little bit as to why these vehicles operate differently and how mm -hmm. they operate the same. So they're in the same in the sense that both of these vehicles feature a gasoline engine. If we're talking about the Sportage specifically, this also translates to the Hyundai Tucson, we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine with the addition of an electric motor. However, when you get to the plug-in, that battery pack is gonna be larger, one mm -hmm. that actually benefits from not only regenerative braking, but from actually charging your vehicle. When it comes to charging your vehicle, you can do it at home, no special wiring needed. Let's say maybe you live at an apartment or a condo where you just don't have the access to a charger or a port outside. You can still charge it at the mall, any public charging station, as long as it's not a DC fast charger. Mm -hmm. The 55 kilometers that our vehicles are rated for is true, true to the name. Mm -hmm. And if you ever want to save it for later, you certainly can. So Kia features a button where you can switch between electric mode, automatic mode, or hybrid mode. So if you're doing your driving on the city in the highway, so highway speeds, it might be more beneficial for you to save that electric range for being in the city where you're experiencing a lot of stop and go. So that's pretty cool. Now I think we should talk about some pros and cons. So Charlotte, yeah. why don't you start off with the hybrid? Ooh, so I'll start off with the pros because let's keep things positive <laughs> on a high note. Yep. Uh, soprano C. Uh, <laughs> that was stupid. Um, so a lot of the questions that people ask is, you know, when it comes to a hybrid, is it going to be worth it to get it? So let's talk about that when it comes to the cost. So obviously for the hybrid is you're still filling it up with gas. It's gonna have a similar size fuel tank, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, but one of the huge benefits is at least with our product is it's not like you need premium fuel. You can just use it regular unleaded. Now, of course, that's gonna differ from manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, but I think that that is really a huge takeaway because you're still filling it up for practically the same, if not a little bit less and having it go a little bit further. Yeah. Wow, that sounds awesome to me. Our fuel tanks are typically smaller in our hybrids. Yeah, maybe five liters smaller. Cheaper to fill up and last longer. Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. That's what we love to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think the draw for me towards a hybrid electric vehicle instead of a plug-in hybrid is the fact that it doesn't allow me to change anything about my lifestyle. And I think that this is also going to be a good option for someone who is looking to get into something that is more fuel efficient, but isn't ready for the stretch of something that is either full EV or plug-in hybrid. And I say that because Gabby touched on the fact that if you live in an apartment, you may not have access to a regular uh, port to plug in your vehicle. So when you have a hybrid, you're able to just get in it, fill it up with gas and go. And that's something I find incredibly appealing. Yeah, you never feel like you're missing out because you can't plug in your car. Absolutely. Right? Uh, another thing is the repairs is it can seem a little bit less intimidating for the repairs on these types of vehicles versus a full EV or plug-in hybrid. Um, let's be real is we've seen um, hybrid electric vehicles a lot longer than we have seen plug-in hybrid or strictly EVs. Mm -hmm. And like think of t Toyota, uh, we've talked about the Prius already, but they have a very, very rich history of EVs or right. sorry of hybrid electric vehicles uh, for almost 20 years in the making. And as we've seen them become more mainstream, the repair costs, they're gonna come down because there's more availability for parts, which you know we may not have seen you know, 10, 20 years ago. So if you were scared of that, don't be afraid of it anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> the other thing is when it comes to the HEV components is many manufacturers are gonna have a longer warranty on those specific components. Yes. And for Kia and Hyundai, that's the same, whether it's HEV, PHEV, or full EV, all of those components have a longer warranty on them. Mm -hmm. So what are the pros of plug-in hybrid? So I would say pros, and my mom drives one. She absolutely loves it. If you're someone who knows that your drive to work is, for example, 35 kilometers and your range on your car is 55 kilometers, you're going to work on EV, as long as you charge your vehicle, of course. So that is a major benefit. Also, if you're in Canada, our PHEVs for the Kia and Hyundai side of things do qualify for the ISA rebate. Woo! And you get a full 5,000 off with mm -hmm. that rebate, which is phenomenal. Now this rebate, brings the price very, very, very close to just a regular hybrid. So you can almost get a PHEV for the cost of an HEV. Availability and wait times are another story. That, that's a, a con, I will say. They are a little bit harder to get, but hopefully in the future we'll see mm -hmm. things improve more and more. So that would be one of my pros for sure. Definitely. Another one is similar to what Charlotte said about the HEV. Let's say you forgot to plug in your car last night. Don't fret, you still have gas in your vehicle and you can make it to where you have to go, no range anxiety, 
included. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of the Goldilocks of cars, I would say. It's a little bit better in the sense than a hybrid, but it's not as, um, I guess, um, as much of a commitment as a fully electric vehicle. Yeah. Now, with that being said, I will say, <laughs> uh, I really do like how you can save your range for later, how you can use it right away if you'd like. Um, just like a hybrid, if you're sitting in traffic, it's gonna be in EV mode regardless of if you have range or not. That's just the way our hybrids are. But I do want to mention a con. Ooh. So again, this one, I feel like you can only really find it worth it if you do plug it in. And the reason why I say this is because this vehicle does have a larger battery, it's heavier. So when that range is depleted, this car, it weighs quite a few more pounds. She's a hefty she, lady. She's hefty. So that means once that range is depleted, the hybrid is working harder. It's not gonna be as fuel efficient as just a straight hybrid mm -hmm. because of that extra weight. So that's where you may benefit more from a regular hybrid. So just uh, to kind of reiterate what Gabby has said is I drive dealership demos and I actually had a Sportage P or a Sorento PHEV, sorry, as my demo. And at my home, I don't have any exterior wiring. So I actually can't plug in. The only way I can plug in a car is if I run it through an extension cord from the interior of my house and throw it out the window. Don't do that, that's yeah. not safe. Literally, do not do that. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, and that's exactly what I found is I was only able to charge it at work, which was great for during the week, but my vehicle was the primary weekend vehicle if we were going out. So I'd find that I'd pretty quickly go through that electric range. And then because of the excess weight and the slightly smaller fuel tank is I'm going through fuel more often than I should have been certainly yeah. yeah and so it ended up costing me a little bit more than I initially anticipated yeah I um, drove my mom's Sorrento PHEV to Deep River which is about on the Ottawa River so it's about five and a half hours away from here and we ran out of range pretty quick <laughs> thank goodness it was a hybrid but still I couldn't help but think this car would have performed much greater if it was just a regular hybrid because yeah. I just didn't have anywhere charged we were camping we didn't have electricity. So <laughs> that's somewhere where I think, yeah, a hybrid would make yeah. more sense. But then again, if you know what your lifestyle is like, you know you have charging at work, you know you have charging at mm -hmm. home, you can certainly make fantastic use out of your plug-in hybrid. Definitely. And that's then, what your mom does. So. Yeah, exactly. So she'll plug in at home, plug in at work, drive 35 kilometers each way, always has range. She'll get gas once a month. Before she used to get gas at least once a week when she was driving her V6 Sorento. Which is crazy. Yes. <laughs> so that's quite the savings there. I will also say some of our PHEV, so I have, it was my very first new car sale at this dealership. I sold a Nero plug in hybrid. So those ones had about 35 kilometers of mm -hmm. all electric range, so even lower. But my customers would go months without putting gas in their car. Now, I don't recommend going too, too long without gas just because you don't want it to get stale. You don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or if anything ever happens, you want to have some sort of fuel. And they loved it. They would never, ever get gas unless oh, they absolutely had to. Truly, that sounds like the dream. Yes. <laughs> uh, do you have any other cons or pros? I, this isn't necessarily a con. It's just a lot of, um, it's a misconception people have. Mm. People will think hybrids kind of relate them to electric vehicles and then also think that they don't have to service their vehicle as often because there's electric components in their car. So if you don't know already, electric vehicles typically require way less service. Wow. Well, well, they don't need an oil change. Yes, they don't need an oil change, but you still need oil changes for plug-in hybrids and regular hybrids mm -hmm. because there is a gasoline or ICE engine in that vehicle. So still get your oil changes. We recommend the same intervals. It's just yeah. best practices when it comes to maintenance for sure. I think some cons when it comes to uh, just general hybrid vehicles is of course, there can be a little bit more of an upfront cost when oh, yes. purchasing them. However, what I will say is it's not as bad as you think it would be. Certainly, you know, yeah. for our products, I think specifically of the Elantra, it's you know maybe twenty five hundred bucks yeah. to get that for to get the hybrid version. And some people are like, oh well, I'll never recoup that fuel cost. You it, probably he, will <laughs> here in Ontario. Like the gas right now is so expensive, and what most people find is that you know they're going to recoup that cost of fuel in two to three years, depending on driving, even sooner, again, depending on what your driving habits are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is, that is really cool. So that's really, it's probably the biggest con that I can think of when it comes to just a strictly HEV, HEV vehicle. Of course, you know, you're still paying for fuel. So that's always going to be a con because yep. it's <laughs> paying for something that is expensive. Um, but let's talk about some of the stereotypical 
um, reasons why you should buy one over the other. And of course, this is going to vary depending on what your lifestyle looks like. And also, I encourage you to do the numbers for yourself, see what makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. So do you wanna start with the PHEV? Yeah, so I think a PHEV is great if you are someone that generally knows you're driving and knows you have a means to charge your vehicle. So let's say you live at home with a garage that has even just a, it's all it takes is a household outlet. You don't need a 240 mm -hmm. volt, like a dryer plug. You just need the regular one. Um, that you can plug it in when you get home from work, from running your errands, you'll have charge for the next day. That's how you really make the best bang for your buck with a plug in Definitely. Hybrid. If you're someone who can't rely on charging your vehicle for use, then you might be better off with the hybrid, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, another thing I'll point out is if you are someone who likes to save or never use gas, so if your driving is very, very rare and it's very predictable, you may really appreciate the benefits that a plug-in hybrid has to offer. Especially when the price comes so close with that rebate. Absolutely. Also, if you're someone who can wait, because if you are placing an order for a new one, it is a little bit of a wait. Yeah. If you're someone who needs a new car right away because your current car just got totaled, it may not be the best option for you. Yeah. All right, what about a hybrid though, Charlotte? So typically hybrids, we can get a little bit quicker. And I actually, I guess that's one of the cons is it's an, a hybrid vehicle is not eligible for any federal incentive as of right now. Mm -hmm. So you are still pay, paying at MSRP for that vehicle. There's nothing yes. additional on top of it that can help you with it. Um, but I think that a hybrid electric vehicle is going to be good for someone who does a lot of driving or road trips. Mm -hmm. um, Gabby talked about this, of course, but these vehicles weigh less than a plug-in hybrid, but you're still getting really, really good fuel efficiency from it. Absolutely. So I think that that is going to be a great reason to go for a hybrid if you're doing tons of commuting. Like, um, I think a plug-in hybrid would be good for me if I had charging at home. But I think a hybrid electric vehicle would be really good for someone like my husband who commutes to Hamilton every day and doesn't have charging at home or at, at work. work. <laughs> so I think for him that that would be a really, really great addition for his driving habits. Um, so I think, and also just if you don't want to change your lifestyle, if you want something that's fuel efficient but don't really want to have to adapt to any changes, this is going to be a really strong contender for you. And I really think it will end up saving you fuel money in the long run. Absolutely. So what's our fun fact? So today's fun fact is one I'm pretty excited to talk about because it involves one of my favorite vehicles, which just so happens to be a plug-in hybrid. And if you're thinking this one's efficient and will save you money. You are so incredibly wrong. You are very, very wrong. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the Porsche 918 Spider. This car Oof. is wicked. It was dubbed probably one of the first um, product, not I shouldn't say production, but uh, plug-in hybrid hypercars. And for good reason, this car is nuts. So this vehicle combines a 4.6 liter V8 Ooh. gasoline engine, which we all know V8 just screams efficiency, and <laughs> dual motors. So dual electric mm -hmm. motors, you got one mounted in the front, one mounted in the rear. Um, together, those come to, hold on, 887 horsepower. Oh, is that all? That, that's it. <laughs> so it's like largely a grocery getter plug-in hybrid Duh. you know <laughs> um no this car is nuts so and again with the plug-in hybrid you get that instant torque right that mm -hmm. you would get in EV largely but i did say it's a plug-in hybrid so what is the all-electric range you may ask Wh what I what is the all-electric range gabby tell me more 12 miles perfect so <laughs> after you're done using that roaring v8 <laughs> you can switch it into our ev mode and cruise around town not for, waste a drop of gas for 12 miles yes and if you're worried about the uh, price to get one of these vehicles there's only 918 of them made oh so it sounds like they're very affordable and very easy to get yes and when you hear the manufacturer porsche they usually make vehicles for you and me like you know oh yes the everyday <laughs> shopper yes no these cars are really expensive <laughs> i think there's one selling at our london porsche dealership for what two million dollars oh that's it oh yeah is that all that's like a wednesday spend for me yeah jeepers so yeah that's our very realistic <laughs> fun fact um i just wanted to tell you guys those specs because they're nuts and I like this podcast so maybe one day we could drive one or own one well I, would... I think it'll most likely be driving if ever e even owning then. Hey, I've Goodbye. seen two of them in person. There you go. Not so bad. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Uh, do, do it again. <laughs> New podcast episodes every Sunday <laughs> at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will see you there. If you want to see more of our content and want to see some more videos, check us out at the Kia Hyundai channel. You can also check us out on Instagram. My Instagram is shars.cars.khc. Gabby, what's yours? Mine's Gabby's or Gabbis. 
G A B I S <laughs> underscore garage. Yes. Can you guess what's in the garage? It's Char's cars. Kia Hyundai channel. Thanks again for watching. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.